See, this is why we question and research things. We don't believe the first thing you tell us or the things that you be feeding the masses. And when I say we, I mean me and you, this community we built. We don't believe the first thing y'all try to tell us. We go look for answers and get our own information and double check. Just like a doctor, man, you want a second and third opinion, right? So in this video right here is titled, we have been educated to believe this does not exist. All right, so we're gonna check this video out. If you knew, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button and join the fam. Let's go. We all know now that there's often a narrative that we're supposed to follow that's pretty Facts. much laid out for us. But in the internet age, more and more people are uncovering some uncomfortable truths. So true. But have the powers that be scrambling to cover it up. From the machine tools from outer space to the ancient people who rode around on dinosaurs. Here's the 20 <laughs> most mysterious things that should not exist. That's why I love discoveries. Number 20. The Lanzo Stone is embedded with a metal screw bar. A few years ago, back in June of 2002, an unusual stone with a screw-threaded metal bar inside was found. This was a very interesting thing indeed. Mr. Zilin Wang, a collector from Lanzhou, China, found this strange object near the Marzong Mountains, which are on the border of Gansu and Xijiang provinces. The mysterious stone is pear-shaped and about 8 centimeters long, 6 centimeters wide, and 6 centimeters thick. It weighs 466 grams, and it's very hard. The rock is a type that's never been seen before, which suggests that it may be a meteorite. But geologists and collectors from all over the world were interested in the item, not only because they didn't know what it wasn't made of, they were also shocked by the artifact that it contained, a screw-threaded metal bar. During the discussion, the scientists came up with a lot of crazy ideas about how this stone was formed. One of the ideas is that this stone is a relic from a civilization before ours. It's thought by some people the civilization like ours existed on Earth before ours. Another theory is that it could be a stony meteorite that brought information from an alien civilization. Since the screw-threaded metal bar is tightly wrapped in the black lithical material, this could be a good explanation. The bar's entrance into the stone and its exposed end don't look like they were made by humans. The truth is, no one knows what this stone and threaded object are, but it could be a clue to something truly amazing. Before we go on, like this video, smash that subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Time for the rare topic. Here's an image that's been spreading across some parts of the internet like what wildfire. Is that? But you might be asking why this is the first time you ever saw it. Well, we've been educated to believe that this didn't exist. The authorities are desperately trying to cover this up, and we can only show a blurred image of this scientist who's holding a portal device that can transport Seriously? you into space. This is amazing technology, but the problem is... This guy's now missing. Was he arrested and thrown in jail? Or did he just portal the heck out of here to go to party on Neptune? As always, comment down below with the hashtag rare topic and let us know your opinion what... in relation to what we just showed on screen. Let's move on to the next one. Number 19. That's why you gotta be careful when you find things, man. It's so certain people be so quick to let everybody know what they've discovered. You know what I mean? They wanna beat their chest in front of a crowd. Man, you gotta be careful. You gotta move right. Akambaro figures. Legend has it that on a warm summer day in 1944, Waldemar Jolsrud was walking through the hills near the edge of Akambaro, a small village in the central Mexican state of Guanajuato. He almost tripped over a half-buried figurine while walking through the hills. From 500 BCE to 200 CE, the area was an important center for ceremonies and trade for the ancient Chupcuaro culture. As a result, pre-Columbian artifacts are often found by accident. But what Jolsrud, a German hardware store owner and amateur archaeologist, found wasn't a piece of broken, colorful pottery with a geometric pattern on it. Instead, it was a figure made of buff clay riding what could only be called a slightly weird dinosaur. Mm. 
His strange first find led Jolstrud to make a makeshift digging site with the help of a family of local farmers. Over 33,000 objects were then found, and each one was crazier than the last. Prehistoric creatures, idols, tools, humanoid figures with Egyptian, African, or Indian features, alien lookalikes, complex architectural compositions, dragons, and monsters. This was like nothing found before, and of course, seeing so many depictions of humans riding dinosaurs raised a lot of questions. How old were these things? Or whether maybe some giant lizard survived into a more recent history than we thought. Number 18. Shinzui. Shinzui, also called Lady Dai, is a mummified woman from China's Han Dynasty, which ran from 206 BC to 220 AD. Even though she's almost 2,000 years old, she still has her own hair, feels soft to the touch, and has ligaments that bend Yo. like those of a living person. Some people they're actually bending and moving her fingers around and stuff like that. Say she's the best preserved human mummy ever. In 1971, construction workers in Changsha found the huge tomb of Shin Zui by accident. It was near an air raid shelter. Nearly 1,000 valuable things were found in her funnel-shaped tomb. There were 162 carved wooden figures of her slaves, hundreds of pieces of lacquerware, and cosmetics and toiletries. Even dinner was served to Shin Zui in the next world. Academics were truly surprised by Shin Zui's amazing what? condition. She could easily become the next health guru like Gwyneth Paltrow, only specializing in people. She's in better shape than a lot of people who are still alive. Her skin in particular is not just soft but also moist and elastic like that of a living person. Her eyelashes, eyebrows, and all of her natural hair, including the hair on her head and even inside of her nose, survived. She died in 163 BC, but when scientists did an autopsy on her bones, they found that her 2,000-year-old body was in the same shape as that of someone who had just died. Number 17. The Main Penny no one has ever doubted that the Melgren coin is a real Norse penny made in Scandinavia in the Middle Ages. But 60 years after Melgren found the coin, archaeologists and coin experts are still trying to figure out how it got to Maine, USA. The idea that the Vikings went to the Americas before Columbus comes from Icelandic sagas that talk about trips from Greenland to a land with grass and grapes that was far to the west. All but a few fans, like Scandinavians who moved to America in the 1800s thought that these were just stories for hundreds of years. They were fiercely proud, so they used these stories to defend their right to live in their new country, especially when they were treated badly or laughed at by Anglo-Saxon immigrants who had come before them. They thought that the old stories were true and wanted proof. All kinds of things that don't belong in Maine have been found in this one place, as if it were a pre-Columbian World's Fair for the northeastern coast of North America. From Lake Erie to Newfoundland. And this coin is the strongest evidence yet. The Vikings were here long before Columbus. Number 16. The Bent Pyramid. The Pyramid of Sneferu was one of the first pyramids to be built. It was also one of the most interesting pyramids in ancient Egypt. It was built in the Egyptian royal necropolis at Dashur. It's different than any other pyramid in Egypt. The southern shining one was what the ancient Egyptians called it. It was called that because it was made of a shiny polished Tura limestone. Around 2600 BC, the Bent Pyramid was built by Pharaoh Sneferu of Egypt's Old Kingdom. The fourth dynasty was started by Sneferu and his stepson Khufu was in charge of building the Great Pyramid at Giza in later oh. years. The pyramid was built in the desert on the west bank of the Nile, 40 kilometers south of Cairo. Up until this point, pyramids had been built on fertile land, but this was different. And instead of being built in a perfect pyramid shape, the top part of the walls curve inward, making it look kind of bent. The bent pyramid is one of only five Old bent Kingdom pyramids pyramid. that still look like they did when they were built 4,500 years ago. Even the limestone shell of the pyramid is still there, which would make it shine in the desert sun. The lower part of the pyramid has walls that rise at a 45 degree angle. The slope suddenly flattens out to 43 degrees, about 49 meters above the base. This is what gives the pyramid its weird shape. And while it may seem like a kind of Costco pyramid compared to the others, this is still an awesome piece of ancient engineering. Absolutely. Number 15. The 500 million year old Dorchester pot should not exist. 
In spite of what most people think, archaeologists often find old things that seem to show a level of technology that, according to mainstream science, shouldn't have existed at the time that they were carbon dated to. These are called ooh parts, short for out of place artifacts. And most of the time, they're studied briefly and then forgotten. Science may seem like it's omniscient, but sometimes on the route to get into the right answer, we get some things wrong and it can sometimes take a little bit of time to correct it. Now we get to the most interesting part, which is the Dorchester pot. This pot is a beautiful metal container that's 4.5 inches tall and 6.5 inches wide. It has a geometric pattern that's embossed with bright silver. To make something this beautiful would take a lot of skill and care. But the main reason that the Dorchester pot is so mysterious and gets so much attention isn't just because it's a beautiful piece of art. The argument is that the pot was stuck in the pudding stone inside a rock or boulder. A few hmm. American scientific articles published strong evidence to back up these claims at the time. Obviously, if this is true, then we need to understand how this happened. The rock that the Dorchester pot came from is at least 500 million years old, according to scientists. Does that mean that the pot itself is also at least 500 million years old? And if it it's is, then older. who was making Victorian-style silverware at a time before even plants and grasses evolved? Number 14. Hairy frog. Bro, whoa. The hairy frogfish looks very strange to say the least. It's a frog. It's gotta be poisonous, right? That's the first thing y'all thought of. I, it, it just looked, whenever I see a colorful frog from now, I, I just automatically assume it's poisonous. The hairy frog. Man. Number 14. Hairy frog. The hairy frog. It's just the stomach area and a few other parts, but. You know what I mean? Them all where the whole body is co colored. Yeah, yeah. Those are definitely poisonous, but this one might be. Fish looks very strange to say the least. It's a frog and a fish, so it's a little bit of frog both, but it's mostly fish. a fish. But it's even more mostly a hairy blob that lives in coral seas, especially where reefs are common in warmer oceans. But the hairy frogfish doesn't just look strange. It also wants to act strange. First, its hair, which are actually spines, help it blend in with the surroundings. This is helped by the fact that, like a chameleon, the frogfish can change color to match the surroundings. They can't swim either, which you might think is a bad thing for a fish. It doesn't look like that's stopping them, though. They don't like to waste energy following things around, so one extra long spine hangs over their lips and acts as bait. When prey swims by to look at the bait, then the frogfish can really move. Even the I didn't even think he could move that fast the way he was just, he was just laying like, yeah, 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 yeah. He definitely, he definitely threw me off with that look, man. Newest slow motion cameras have trouble catching the frogfish's attack because it happens. Bro. All right, he got me. For sure got me. Just like he got those fish. Yo. Even the newest slow motion cameras have trouble catching the frogfish's attack because it happens Bow! so quickly. It only takes one six thousandth of a second to bite, making it one of the fastest eaters in the whole world. Number 13. But the way it looks is like, uh, I'm sleepy, uh, I move like a tortoise, uh, and then he snaps and gets you before you can blink. Mystery of the Yo. Salzburg Cube. The now famous Salzburg cube, also called the Wolf's Egg Iron, is a very strange ancient artifact that was found in 1885 in Wolf's Egg am Hasra, Austria, inside lignite that had been mined there. A worker at Braun Iron Factory in Schondorf, Austria, found the object when he was breaking up a block of lignite that was 20 million years old. Later wow. in 1886, mining engineer Adolf Gerlt told the Natural History Society of Bonn about the strange, unexplainable object. He said that it was made of iron, had a thin layer of rust on it, and had a specific gravity of 7.75. The thing weighs 785 grams and is 67 millimeters long, 67 millimeters wide, and 47 millimeters thick. 
Four of its sides are roughly flat, while the other two, which are on opposite sides, are perfectly rounded. About halfway up the height of the object, a fairly deep groove is cut all the way around it. The cube was clearly made by a machine, but what kind of machines were around 20 million years ago? The original cube is kept in the Hey Mothis Museum in Wachlerbruck, Austria, and no one's allowed to see it. Creepy. Number 12. UFO artifact found next to dinosaur bones. We often assume that we're the first intelligent species to inhabit this planet, but that may turn out to be false, and not just because humans aren't always all that intelligent. Here's some evidence of an advanced civilization which may have preceded our own by thousands of years. A piece of aluminum that looks like it was made by hand is being held up as proof that aliens came to Earth 250,000 years ago. The mysterious piece of metal was found in Romania in 1973, and it wasn't made public at the time. Since then, tests have shown that the object is made of 12 different metals and is 90% aluminum. Metallic aluminum wasn't really made by humans until about 200 years ago, so the discovery of a big piece that's said to be up to 250,000 years old is being held up as a big deal. And it's even stranger that it was found mixed in with a bunch of dinosaur bones. Is this an ancient dinosaur hunting weapon of some kind? Experts say the metal piece has hollows that makes it look like it was made as a part of a more complicated machine. Now people are arguing a lot about whether or not the object is part of a UFO and proof that an alien civilization visited Earth in the past. Uh -huh. Number 11. The Antikythera Mechanism. How about an ancient computer that was lost World's in the ocean by computer. some even smarter than smart ancient Greeks? Well, that's what the Antikythera Mechanism is. It's got his name from the small port where the sponge fisherman founded in 1900. Around 200 BC, a shipwreck here left a lot of treasure behind. But the most interesting thing was a strange clockwork mechanism. It's thought that the mechanism was used to help sailors figure out where the moon was, where the planets were, and when eclipses happened. 3D scanning has shown that it has an amazing level of mechanical complexity. Unlike anything else from the ancient world or even before the European Renaissance when clockwork technology improved, it remains one of the biggest mysteries of ancient history, and it may explain why Greek culture was so strong at the time. If they had this kind of navigation tech, that was a major advantage. But even so, I guess they couldn't navigate away from those rocks and avoid the catastrophe. Number 10. The Conti Mouse. The mouse with the you ear. You may have seen a mouse with a human ear on its back, back in the early days of the internet. Uh. This kind of image would just land in your inbox with zero context. You might have thought that the mouse was genetically modified, deformed, or the results of scientists playing God. Well, all of those are true, in a way. Harvard surgeons Joseph and Charles Vacanti, along with MIT engineer Bob Langer, tried out ways to make human body parts in the lab. As a part of a study to learn more about how they could help grow body parts, they put the shape of a human ear in the back of a mouse. In 1997, they wrote about what they found. The strange Vacanti mouse was shown to the whole world after BBC aired a show about tissue engineering. In the late 1990s, the picture led to a lot of protests uh -huh. against genetic engineering, even though no genetic manipulation was actually done in this particular experiment. And what about the mouse? What was its fate? Joseph Vacanti made a joke that the mouse had its ear removed and then lived out a normal, happy life. But lab workers usually kill the mice they work with and the original paper they wrote about how the mice were after sacrifice. Sacrifice means they were killed by lab workers, sadly, so don't expect this one to be nibbling on your cheese at night. Number nine. It's the bad part about, you know what I mean, trying to advance technology, different things, and, and things that get sacrificed on our way to discovering different things. You know what I mean? Mice, monkeys, different you know when they send stuff out in the space that's what they were sending monkeys different things like that they were sending out in the space in the beginning remember so that's that's the part that it, it sucks about it you know in order for us to advance some animals lose their life in order for us to progress it, it, it just sucks it's no way around it don't expect this one to be nibbling on your cheese at night Number nine, light bulb found in Egyptian tomb. 
They'll already know my the temple of the this. Egyptian goddess Hathor at Dendra is one of the best preserved ancient Egyptian temples. On one of its walls, there may be a drawing of a light bulb. What the hell? This makes. I don't think it's, it's so much as a light bulb. I think it's energy. Energy, like. Because, you know, they've been saying here lately that the pyramids was designed for totally from different than what we've always believed right and i'm thinking they were trying to power or generate power or something i don't know and i think that's what that is man something to do with some type of generation of energy maybe from the sun or maybe from i don't know i don't know what they were doing but a light bulb i just never been one to go along with that theory could be though the Dendra light bulb, a very it's strange possible example of modern technology from the past. The so-called Dendra light is shown in three stone reliefs in the temple. At first glance, it looks like a crook-shaped bulb with a lotus socket at one end, a cable running below it, and a snake-shaped cord filament inside. In the most well-known picture of the so-called Dendra light, a priest holds up the lamp and a few more figures can be seen below it. It's important to remember that even though researchers have dug up thousands of ancient sites in Egypt, they haven't found any clear electrical objects, let alone a light bulb. There's no proof- Maybe some type of laser or something, I don't know. <laughs> I know that's hard to believe for back then, but the information we've received so far, um, I don't put anything back uh, uh, past them back then as far as their capabilities. Proof that the ancient Egyptians used electricity to light their stuff, but maybe some of their gods did. Number eight, El Mirador, maybe some the type lost of weapon. Mayan city. Ooh, maybe that was some type of weapon. Yeah. From 300 BC to 150 AD, up to 80,000 people lived in El Mirador. The 72 meter tall Danta Pyramid, which was the Mayans' tallest structure and world's largest pyramid, was in charge of this place. The fact that the ruins can only be reached on foot, by horse, or by helicopter, the closest road is 60 kilometers Whoa. away, makes them even more interesting. Even better, the site is in the large Maya Biosphere Reserve, which is part of the Mirador Basin, full of ruins. This place has been one of the most varied ecosystems in the world. It's home to jaguars, pumas, giant anteaters, scarlet macaws, and hundreds of plants and trees that can only be found here. In 1885, a man named Claudio Urrutia made a map of part of the Mirador Basin. There he found some old buildings, but nobody really paid much attention to El Mirador until 1962, when Ian Graham stayed there for a while and made the first map of the area. This large group of pre-classic Mayan cities in Mesoamerica are in danger because the equipment used to build logging roads, which makes it easier for people to move in the area, is destroying, looting, and cutting down trees. Mirador Basin is a place in the far north of Guatemala, in the region of Petén. It's known for its many archaeological sites, many which are the biggest and oldest in the Maya world. Number 7. The Mystery of the Flying Machines at Seti People say that the hieroglyphs at the Temple of Seti show a helicopter, a submarine, and a zeppelin or plane. Some people who are interested in the occult and ufological things think that some of the hieroglyphs carved on an ark on the site show modern technology, kind of like the dendrolite that we saw earlier. Most of these theories are based on fraudulent archaeology, and the pictures that are often used as evidence have been altered in some way, at least according to skeptics. Well, archaeologists really found these hieroglyphs in Seti's tomb when a piece of plaster fell off a wall and showed the pictures for the first time in thousands of years. So they're not so easy to dismiss. But what if that thing on the left that looks like a bug is actually a huge alien? Are they the ones who are going to come and enslave us? I, for one, welcome our new alien overlords. Number six, <laughs> the Gosford Glyphs. If you were asked where you would most likely find a secret stash of Egyptian rock carvings, you'd probably say in North Africa, right? Well, how about Australia? Brisbane Water National Park near Gosford on the New South Wales Central Coast would be one of the last places that most people would expect to find such ancient things. But that's where more than 300 symbols of Egyptian gods, chickens, bees, and other weird critters are carved into a rock face. They're a natural crypt made of two vertical sandstone walls that are 3.5 meters high. Where did they come from? One popular- th All this stuff is the key to life. 
It's the answer to everything, man. We just got to figure this stuff out. These are all the answers laid out in front of us, and we just don't have We can't understand it. That's what's so frustrating, man. Seriously. Theory is that they were made by Egyptians who sailed to Australia about 5,000 years ago, got shipwrecked, and then carved their story into the rocks here after being lost at sea. Does this claim have any truth to it? Of course not. The spokesperson for the NSW what? National Parks and Wildlife Service said, We learned about the engravings in the early 1980s, which is when most of them were thought to have been made. Even though there's a lot of evidence that the so-called hieroglyphs are a complete hoax, there's still a lot of interest in them, and many curious people visit the site each year. No matter where the sandstone carvings came from, it's hard to believe you're only a 30-minute walk from the suburbs. When you One day we're gonna figure it out. And this whole time we were believing it was a hoax, we gonna feel like, bro. <laughs> and it's gonna be sad because the answers were always right up under our nose. You have to climb over moss covered boulders and squeeze like Indiana Jones through dark, damp cracks. Especially when those dark, damp cracks lead you to an entrance to a natural crypt filled with hieroglyphs. It's a real adventure in the city. Number five. Bizarre three-fingered mummified hand found in a tunnel in the Peruvian desert. Next up, a mummified hand with just three fingers and eight inch fingers were found in a tunnel in the desert of Peru. At first glance, it might look like some artist just made it up out of their imagination. But a doctor in Cusco, Peru looked at it and found that it's made of real skin and bone, with six bones in each finger. The strange looking hand was supposedly given to Peruvian researcher Brain Foster who runs Hidden Inca Tours, along with a small mummified elongated- Shit has a hand, maybe a foot maybe. That looked kind of like a foot too. Skull and a small mummified body. The person from the area who has the items told Forsterer that they were found in a tunnel in the Peruvian desert in January of 2016. The tunnel was closed off by a big stone door and inside were two clay covered sarcophagi that held body parts. He oh. said he didn't want to sell the mummified body parts. He just wanted to know who they were or what they might have belonged to. An examination showed that the mummified hand is made of skin and bone, which means it's not a fake unless it was somehow made using real bones, flesh and skin, which could be even creepier. Number four, Kensington runestone. The Kensington runestone is a large piece of gray wax stone that has runes carved on it. The Kensington runestone is said to have been found in 1898 in the town of Kensington, which is in the middle of Minnesota. Olaf Omen, a Swedish immigrant, said that he found it by accident in a field under a tree in Solom, a mostly rural township in Douglas County. Duh, and here I thought for sure Olaf must have been a friend of Rose's from St. Olaf. Olaf Omen said that he found the runestone while he was cleaning up a piece of land he had just bought. Before he plowed, he was pulling up trees and stumps. He said the runestone was near the top of a small hill that rose above a wetland. The runestone was supposedly found laying flat, face down, and completely tangled up in the root of a poplar tree. After being translated, the writing on the Kensington runestone looks like something Scandinavian explorers left behind in the 14th century. It has the year 1362 written on it, which is around 300 years after the end of the Viking era. And now the stone is at the center of a heated debate about whether or not it's real. Some people who don't believe the Kensington runestone is real point directly at Olaf Omen, saying that the inscription was a hoax that he created. Even so, there is still a strong and vocal group of people who think the Kensington runestone is real. So what do you think? Number three, 2000 year old sword, sword still in mint condition. The blade of a Chinese sword that was taken out of its sheath for the first time in more than 2,000 years was still perfectly shiny. Archaeologists found the ancient weapon in a tomb in the ruins of Chen Yang City in central China. It's thought to be about 2,300 years old. When they took the big blade out of its dirty sheath, they saw that it hadn't rusted and was still sharp, shiny. This is how I know I'm still a kid at heart. <laughs> I'd be out somewhere somewhere outside, man, doing all kind of martial arts moves or attempting martial arts moves with it. Like I just got the power because I found this ancient sword. Man. I, I'm still a kid at heart. I can't help it. Me and almost in perfect shape. The Henan Provincial Institute of Cultural Relics and Archaeology posted pictures of the sword on the Chinese social network Weibo. The artifact is thought to be from China's Warring States period, which lasted from about 475 BC to 221 BC. During this time, the Zhou Dynasty area was split into eight states. 
and there was often fighting between them. The sword had been buried with its owner in a wooden coffin, and no one at the time surely imagined it would emerge again in perfect condition so many years in the distant future. Wow. Number two, Viking warrior women. On the Swedish island of Burka, a Swedish entomologist named Hjalmar Stolp, who later became an archaeologist, found the grave of a Viking warrior in 1871. Around the body were the bones of two horses that had been killed as sacrifices. There was also a double-edged sword, a scramasax, which is a long, thin knife, a bow, a shield, and a spear. Every Viking weapon that was known at the time. It was a surprising find, especially because Viking warrior graves rarely have more than three weapons. There was also a full set of Fnefetoffel, which is sometimes called Viking chess, and it shows how a war leader thinks about strategy and how much power he has. Weapons, mm. game pieces, and the location of what is now called Grave BJ581 all showed that the person buried there was a well-known and respected Viking warrior. No one was really ready for what happened when DNA tests were made in 2017 and a new story started to come out. Even though a famous warrior was in BJ581, that person wasn't a man. This was a strong warrior woman. Women had some of the best jobs in the Viking world, including being some of the best warriors. This was different from the way that most other people lived at that time. Hell, even- And that's crazy because you don't hear about too many women warriors back then. That's good. Hey, I like to hear it. This time, these women are so tough that you wouldn't want to mess with them. And this grave is proof of that. Spikes Number Lena. one, 99 million year old baby snake fossil found in amber. The world's first known snake embryo baby from 99 snake. million years ago was found recently in Myanmar. It was preserved in amber. What's fascinating is what the fossil can tell us about how snakes have changed over time. I Their research know. showed that the small animal, which is about five centimeters long, is a new species called Xiaophis myanmarensis. The fossil skeleton doesn't have a head, but scientists think that it couldn't have been longer than eight centimeters. But what's really amazing about this find is what the tiny fossil says about the animal that got caught. Ancient snakes from Argentina, Africa, India, and Australia are all related to this one. Snakes are fragile, so they don't preserve well, and the young are even more fragile. This new fossil gives scientists much needed information about the ancient snake's journey from Australia to Myanmar. Unwanted information. I, I don't care to know anything about a snake. Let it stay a fossil. This journey began more than 180 million years ago, and it took the species far from home. We've not only found the first baby snake, but also the first proof that a fossil snake lived in a forest. Which of these mysteries do you think everyone should know about? What Women warriors back in ancient civilizations, bro. I like that. I want to hear more about that. It's the first time and I can't recall. And them really putting emphasis on that. So... We need to we need to hear some more about some of those women warriors from back then, man. I think that'll be a pretty interesting topic to go over and discuss. You know what I mean? But y'all get at me in the comment section, man, and let me know what you thought of this video, man, and these amazing discoveries. Till the next one, I'm gone. Peace.